So, first we've got to know what a residual is. We've done this already. Residual is nothing but the observed value minus the expected value. Or the observed counts minus the expected counts. That is simply the residual. But we have to do something called standardization. So a standardized residual is simply residual divided by a uh, standard error. The formula for the denominator, um, I'm not going to go over that here. So all you have to know is when you standardize the resulting distribution that you get, is a bell curve. So if you took the residuals, um, theoretically, we will have a bell curve. And it is a standard normal, so the mean would be zero. Standard deviation would be one. Good, no. Do you recall going one standard deviation on either side of the mean, two standard deviations on the other side? Okay. For the middle zero to be the null. In our test, by definition, null means no association, correct? <laughs> Or you simply say independence. One in the same. Alternative means there is an association. X and Y, or X depends on, uh, excuse me, Y depends on X. Yes, so dependence. The standardized residuals simply measure the difference between the observed and the expected values. Do we agree? <laughs> now, if you recall, the chi squared of the cell was simply observed minus expected squared divided by E. Yes. The only difference between this and that is that here I've squared the numerator and instead of standard error, I had the expected counts. So how did we conclude that we reject the null with the chi squared? If you go farther and farther to the right, then you're going to reject and conclude that there is an association or dependence. So when it comes to a residual, a standardized residual, you're not squaring. Yes. So that could either be positive or negative. If the expected count is larger than the observed, then that would be negative. Yes. If the expected count is less than the observed count, that would be positive. If the expected and the observed are one and the same, then we'll have zero, correct? The only time where the expected and the observed would be the same is when there is no association. So if the residuals hover around zero, no association, which is why I put H dog in. Now, what are the chances that an observation would fall out here? Yes. 
This is from 2023. What person lies between negative two and two? Oh, so close. 95%. Right? So if you get a number, a standardized residual that has between negative two and two, then you are hovering around zero. So no association for that particular case. And if you go to three standard deviations on either side, we will have 99.7%. We will still say that there is no association. But if the standardized residual exceeds three or goes below negative three, then we will say that there is significance. Indicating that there is dependence or association. Same on this side, there is dependence or association. And there happens to be significance. Are you able to see the numbers or do we have to make it bigger? Can you see? Yes. This particular mm -hmm. output. So that's coming from Minitab. Minitab is another statistical software. So this is a contingency table. Um, So up here, the rows, religion, columns, happiness. I want you to interpret, look at the table, forget about the numbers. What are we trying to associate or find dependence if there are any? Yes, okay. Good. So we are trying to see if there is an association between religiosity and happiness. And here they have coded the variables for you. One, at most several times a year, you attend religious services. Two would mean once a month um, to nearly a week. Three, every week to several times a week. Good. And Colin, not too happy, pretty happy, very happy. Good. Now, prior to getting into the concept of strength of association, the first thing to look at should be, is there an association to begin with? Is there a connection between religiosity and happiness? Are they related? Read that output and look at things carefully and tell me if they are connected, if there is an uh, association. So that is the mini tab output. Look at all the things that are provided to you, and based on what you see, do you believe that there is an association between religiosity and happiness? Um, so in that output, the things that we need to look at, these are the counts. We don't have to worry about them. They did the work for you. They gave this output. What is important, the chi-square value, the degrees of freedom, and the p-value, yes? A large chi-squared will result in a small p-value. That we know, but a large chi-squared doesn't imply stronger association. Since p-value is less than alpha of 0 0.05, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, we are going to reject the null. If I reject the null, I go with the alternative. What does the alternative state? 
the alternative state that that is an association. So there is a connection between religiosity and happiness. Good. Now that we've established that there is a connection, we want to know which groups are making this um, strong, right? Now, what is causing this effect? We can identify that using the standardized residual. If the standardized residual falls below negative three or above three, then there is a significant effect. So, That is the residual value that you see, 4.057. Um, is that bigger than three? Yeah. Yes. So that particular group shows strong association. In other words, what is one? At most several times a week, uh, several times a year, they're not too happy. There is a, a there is strength over here. That's not significant, right? Because it's within negative three and three. Is that significant? Yes. Yes, it goes below negative three. So at most several times a year is connected to being very happy. And Number two, once a month to nearly every week. Uh, is it significant? No. Negative 2.566, no. Uh, the second case, pretty happy. No. No. How about, you know, once a month to nearly every week and very happy? No. No. Case three, every week to several times a week, is there a significant effect? No. How about the second one? Yeah. No. How about the last one? Yes. Yes. Going every week to several times a week, significant effect. Now, some people might argue negative two to two is good enough instead of looking at negative three to three. I would say going past three is a better measure. Uh, in the book, or when you do my lab, they will tell you that's negative two to two, or should you look for values above three and below negative three. So of all the cases, which is driving us toward association, it would be the very first case, which is at most several times a year, and people being not too happy, pretty happy, very happy. Does that make sense? So those three are the driving, oh, excuse me, not too happy and very happy are the driving factors. And in the very last case, every week to several times a week, and very happy. Good. So here's an example where connect marital happiness and general happiness. Um, so that is our contingency table. In this contingency table, we don't have um, a mini tab output or anything like that. All they are giving us is the standardized residual. Um, is it standardized? Yes, it has to be. So they're just giving you the standardized residuals within parentheses. So part A wants to know what a relatively small standardized residual such as negative 0.9 in the second cell represents. Who can tell me? So not to have a happy marriage, general happiness, pretty happy. In simple terms, if you're miserable in your marriage, are you very happy in general? No, no right? So um, 
Is there an association? Could I say, okay, John over there is miserable in his marriage. Um, so he is likely to be pretty happy or not very happy. Is, is there a connection between the two? Yes. Oh. You don't say yes because you have preconceived notions about marriage. Olga says no. Maybe she does too. <laughs> right. You don't want to talk about that. <laughs> oh, so I am right. Okay, so it is negative point nine. It's right in the middle, close to zero, right? If it is close to zero, we say that there are there is no association between the two. So just because you're not happy, not too happy in your marriage doesn't seem like it is connected to you being pretty happy in general or otherwise there is simply no association um in which cells do you infer that the population has more cases that would occur if happiness and marital happiness were independent pick one of these cells and explain the association relative to independent so if things were to be independent between marital happiness and general happiness what we are saying is your marital happiness has nothing to do with you being happy in general no association they are independent of each other if that is the case which cells should you pick the negative point nine one. Huh? The negative point nine one. The negative point nine one, right? Negative point nine over here. Now, perhaps we could include that too, but the cell count is too small. It's only four. Um, so I'm going to leave here. Um, so that is the only cell that indicates that there is no association. Everything else indicates that there is an association. Does that make sense? So our preconceived notions seem to be true. If you're miserable in your marriage, you're not likely to be happy in general. If you're very happy in your marriage, you're likely to be very happy in general. So there is a connection. Does that make sense? Yes? 